All right, guys, I'll take this one. I'm the Mumish. Now, uh, I did say to you we're talking music and soul candy this current coming hour. Actually, we're not. So, Blanca came through. That's a little bit of a throw forward to next week. Next week is the final installment of our Boston yeah. Media House uh, Focus Forum roundtables. And next week, some musicians, and maybe you, you know someone that wasn't listening, tell a friend to tell a friend. Next week, Wednesday, during the final hour of the show, we're going to be talking all things music, music production, DJ 101 courses, and soul candy and the partnership with Boston Media House. However, uh, don't stress because all you prospective filmmakers, actors, actresses, TV producers, Woo! today is for you. Nice. Welcome to the Media Focus Forum brought to you proudly by Boston Media House. And today, we're focusing on the industry of television and film. Yay. Today, we'll be hearing about how the film industry is changing and what does it actually take for you to enter the world of television. Candice, this is like your dream. It's right up my alley. Hey, this I'm so excited dream. for this. Chat, so really. today you're going to learn something that is going to help you about your yes, dreams. Yes. Okay. Right. It's the Media Focus Forum with the Y Mornings team in Boston Media House. Joining me on the line, uh, first up, we are going to be chatting to Gerard Ellis. Uh, now, Gerard is a, the television head of department and lecturer at Boston Media House. He has worked in the industry um, with film great Katinka Heinz, if you know who yes. that is. And he has two short films which have been part of the CakeNet uh, Silver Scarum Festival. Very cool. Gerard, good morning. Good morning, Gerard. Good morning, good morning. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Welcome. Gerard, what are some of the skills or, let's say, characteristics that a person listening to the show right now would need to have to have a successful career in television, film, um, and, and everything associated with it? Um, I think that's a fantastic question. And I think because there's so many misconceptions about this industry, um, especially, um, you know, how you should behave and, you know, what your outlook on it should be. Um, I think that the skills and characteristics for being a filmmaker, especially in, in our local industry, um, is quite a lot. So I'd start off by saying being thick-skinned, um, being able to deal with disappointment and push through regardless. I mean, it's a doggy dog eat wolves out there. Um, and I think um, to know and to realize um, how sad it might sound that no idea or concept is actually 100% unique in itself. But the interpretation or spin on it that filmmakers bring, that's the, the deal quencher. That's the make or break. Um, yeah. So, you know, to be able to, to, to work through any disappointment that you might get, especially starting out in the industry, is really vital, I think. So patience, resilience, perseverance. And of course, passion. I think passion underlines the whole, the whole, uh, 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 um, you know, foundation of, of moving forward as a filmmaker. Um, having a passion for telling stories and, and narrative as a whole. Um, and I think once you have that passion instilled, um, you know, you will, um, as you deal with these, these, these kind of, of, of transactions, these types of pitching sessions, of getting your stories out there on a global scale, um, you quickly find out that it, it's not as easy as it looks. But I do believe, uh, truly believe, that those absolute passionate filmmakers will push through and, and their stories will get made um, and they'll be seen on screen. I want to I want to talk about different types of jobs. You said be thick skinned. Um, it's a dog eat dog kind of world, and it is. I mean, from from looking out from where I'm seated, it's a, it's another one of those industries where you may have to start in a certain job and then move your way up and work your way through to actually being that director and directing your own. You might have to you know be director of photography. You might have to be an assistant director. You might have to work on lighting or work on sound. So tell me about the different types of jobs that the industry has and that once I've qualified from Boston, the kind of jobs I could be looking at, at, at acquiring? Um, absolutely. So, so what do we predominantly look at uh, from Boston Media House's uh, perspective? We look at the three fundamental phases, uh, the three production phases. So that's your pre-production, your, your main production phase, and finally your post-production phase. And within the pre-production phase, that also includes the de development of your, your concept or your idea. So, yes, absolutely true. Um, I mean, there is a misconception that a lot of students think that if they come to, to an institution like Boston Media House, they're going to study here and walk into a job as a film director. Not true. 
but I mean, you know, never say never. But there is a there is a general there is a general kind of of ladder that one needs to to, to walk and step up, um, to get to that dream job. Um, within the pre production phase, which focuses um, predominantly on logistical side, you could become something like um, you know a production manager, production coordinator, and and finally a producer. Students tend to start out as a production assistant and work themselves up. And I always tell the students, if you are more of a kind of left-brain person, um, you like to organize things, you like to work with spreadsheets and budgets and those kind of things, this is more the phase that you should be looking at. Um, the second phase is, is the, I, I call it the fun phase. That's the technical and, and innovative part of shooting the actual film. So that's the, the production part where we do the camera work, the lighting, the sound. Um, so not as logistically inclined in terms of, of organizing, but on a technical perspective, from a technical perspective, um, you know, camera technicians, um, camera operators, your director of photography, floor managers, sound and lighting technicians, and obviously on the director side, um, your director's first AD or assistant director, directors, and even casting directors. Um, and then finally, the post-production phase. It's very exciting. We're working with um, uh, DaVinci Resolve software at, at, at Boston Media House currently, and we have a fully fledged, fully operational broadcast studio at our Sandton campus for the new specialization a television subject and we use black magic and top of the range equipment so color greatest um, uh, editors offline and online sound wow. editors music and score composing it's all there packaged and ready to be discovered it's really really exciting all right Gerard. now how has the streaming industry such as like netflix changed the television yeah. and film industry well, um, <laughs> well, just just to, to put it bluntly, in a massive way, um, I think distribution from a distribution and marketing perspective, it it it's mind blowing. Um, I think these streaming giants, um, I like to say that the stream machine is constantly hungry for content on a global scale. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think it's opened the opportunity to to up and coming filmmakers um, um, to really get their work out there. And not just on a smaller local scale, but the mm. fact that Netflix is now engaging uh, with South Africa, our local market, in more ways than one. Um, this gives us the opportunity to show our story to, to Europe, to the Americas, to Australia, to Asia, and vice versa. So it's really becoming so um, accessible to anyone um, on any screen, on any format. So it's really, it, it's so exciting. It's actually a bit overwhelming. But I would like to also add, and I think this is also up for debate, and I've discussed this with many students. Um, you know, it's a question of authenticity and sentimentality in a way. Um, are we are we losing the, the, the film experience in a cinema and sitting in a dark room. That's what I've been saying, with, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, sitting in that dark room with audiences and watching that big screen, that intimate, magical moment, are we, are we you know, maybe too hastily jumping the, the streaming gun and, and letting that slide a bit? Is it, is it really a good thing? Um, because I always, I always tell students, if they ask me, they say, sir, what, what makes a good film? And I say, it, 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 it's very straightforward. If you walk into a cinema as one person and you leave as a different person, that's a good point. Uh-huh. Ah, nice. I yeah. like that. Yeah. Look, I, I agree with you with many of the points you made. And I also agree it's extremely debatable because, I mean, we could also look at the numbers. I mean, you know, as an actress, if you land a role on Blood and Water and it's being distributed internationally by Netflix, you're being seen by millions and millions of people. But if it's only released in a mm-hmm. cinema um, at like Cavendish Mall in the Cape, you know, 500 people are going to see the movie on opening day as opposed to 500 million people seeing it over the course of the opening month. So I think it is, you know, very much up for debate, but you raise a good point there. On a closing note from myself, Gerard, if I have a great idea, and I have tons of these, by the way, um, if I if I have a great idea for a television show or a movie and it's in my head, how do I get it out there? And how do um, I protect it? 
Ah, very, very important. So, so my first, uh, my first suggestion and, and and advice would be to get yourself um, registered with a, with a guild. So, um, the Writers Guild of South Africa. I'm a member of the Writers Guild of South Africa. They do amazing work, um, and they usually give members um, and writers uh, an opportunity to to save um, and register their IP or intellectual property with them. And this just backs you up in the case of, um, you know, getting into a dispute with any producer or production company wanting to take your idea. So I always tell the students, I always tell the filmmakers, you know, you know, get that backing before you, you get into a messy situation. Um, so, so the Writers Guild of South Africa is definitely a, a, a must, I think. Um, and then just to get your idea out there. I think um, you know we we we've just spoken about the the streaming the streaming machine um, and all these streaming platforms, and um, I think um, you know it's really crucial um, to know that these streaming uh, uh, platforms need content constantly. So they've opened up a lot of their portals for uh, 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 individual filmmakers and also production companies alike to actually contact contact them online and pitch and submit ideas. Now, they've got various different ways of doing that online. Um, some of them do need do need uh, contact through a production company and others do actually give you the opportunity as an um, individual filmmaker to do that. Um, I know Showmax has got that initiative and Netflix um, is, is, a, is a bit more complicated, but, they, but now that they've got this fantastic relationship with South Africa, um, and Africa, um, you know, it, it's becoming more accessible. Um, and on all, and another another platform that I also would like to mention and tell filmmakers, don't disregard this, is film festivals. I think film festivals are still an integrated and crucial part of the machine. Um, you know, getting your short films out there, and even if it's not necessarily, um, you know, by kickoff on a global scale, um, you know, those people in those audiences at, at Film Mart, they film buyers and they, they look for content and they can set up negotiations with the likes of streaming networks. So, yes, I would say um, getting yourself, you know, registered with a guild, um, looking at, 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 at local or international uh, film festivals, and then um, getting connected with these streaming companies. Those are exciting and great opportunities to get your stories out there. All right, thank you so much. Gerard, I've learned a lot. Candace actually has a pen and paper in front of her. She was writing things down. She has Fantastic a dream of being Andrew. being in thank the industry. Gerard, what a wonderful chat and have a great day. And we hope that we've inspired some students to come and make their way to your classroom in 2022. I can't wait. Thank you so much, guys. All the best and make those stories happen. Yes. I'm not telling nobody my stories. Oh, wait, I do every day. <laughs> ah, my intellectual property is gone. Mom, can you spell discernment? Hmm, where did you learn that word? I have a secret weapon. It's called Google. <laughs> Clever girl. Work, study and play. Unlock the best you can be in 2022. Get the Technopop 2XF 4G smartphone for only 599 Rand per month. Plus 140 voice minutes, 1.2 gigs anytime data and 1 gig YouTube data monthly for 12 months when you recharge for 29 Rand per month. Available at Vodacom stores, online and participating retailers. T's and C's apply. Wear a mask. Stay safe. Further together. Vodacom. ShopRite's extra savings card gives you the power to save this January. I got the power. Swipe and save up to 40% on deals like 5 kilos Goldie or Farmer's Choice Frozen Mixed Chicken Portions for only $159.99 each. And Right Brand Large Eggs, 30 per pack for just $54.99. Save 9 Rand. Offers valid in Gauteng, Mpumalanga, Limpopo and Northwest Province until this Sunday. The ShopRite price. The price you can trust always.
Are you intrigued by the media industry or do you think you have what it takes to be the next media mogul? The Media Focus Forum Roundtable with Why Mornings is focused on discussing all aspects of the media industry. Tune in for a day in the life of a media professional, career options, the media landscape and where to get your start. Hear from industry greats, Boston Media House graduates, lecturers and get insights on how to crack it in the industry. That's the Media Focus Forum Roundtable with Boston Media House on Why Mornings every Wednesday between 8 and 9 a.m. Visit Boston mediahouse.ac.za and register today. Connect. Create. Express. Why News Headlines. In your headlines, President Cyril Ramaphosa has between 7 and 10 days to submit a written reply to the Standing Committee on Public Accounts over eyebrow-raising utterances attributed to him in a leaked audio and the Independent Policing Union of South Africa has expressed shock over a report which shows that 147 police officers have been identified as alleged perpetrators of domestic violence in the six months between April and September 2021. That's in 50 police stations. I'll have more on these now other stories at the top of the hour but for now here's Ntakom Kare with your sports Indeed, Brastev, take it away Sports Parliament again. Steph Curry from downtown. Now this is a sports show How young again are they going to be a sports show? How young very good morning to you once again from the sports desk with your last updates on hashtag why mornings. I'm in Kwamkari. We'll keep leading with the Africa Cup of Nations last 16 fixtures where Morocco secured their spots in the last eight after coming from behind to beat Malawi 2-1 thanks to goals from Yusuf N. Yesri as well as Hashkraf Hakimi. Orlando Pirates striker Gabadino Mango opened the scoring for the Flames in what is a contender for goal of the tournament but the North Africans showed their class and will now face either Egypt or the Ivory Coast in Sunday's last eight fixture. Egypt and Cote d'Ivoire will go toe-to-toe this evening at 6 p.m. In the other fixture from yesterday, Africa's number one ranked team Senegal beat a nine-man Cape Verde tuna at the Koking Stadium to also cement their spots in the quarterfinals. Sadio Mane and Bambe Diang waited until the second half to find the net and the Taranga Lions will face either Mali or Equatorial Guinea who will face off tonight at 9 p.m. In the latest from the Australian Open in tennis, Iga Swiatek is through to a second Grand Slam semi-final after staging a comeback to beat Gaia Kanepi 4-6, 7-6 and 6-3. The number seven seed will now take on Daniel Collins in this Thursday's for in, in Thursday's rather. A semi-final for a place in the women's final. Also, Daniel Collins stormed her way into her second Australian semi-final with an emphatic 7-5-6 love win over Eliza Cornet in the early hours of this morning. And then in rugby, the Emirates Lions will be without flanker Vincent Chituka for at least six weeks due to a shoulder injury. And finally, in cricket, the junior protests will be up against England in the Super League quarterfinal at the Under-19 Cricket World Cup in the West Indies this afternoon at 3 p.m. And a quarter to their coach, Uwe uh, Shruki Conrad, he said, is fully focused on the task. Shooks! That's the one. That's the one. Your next sports update will be on the Lady on Drive for War Sports. I'm in Sakom Kari. Yeah, you know how far back I go with Shukri Conrad. Uh, really? One of my Shooks. Yeah. yeah. Like, Shukri Conrad's known me since I was like four years old. Nice. Like, yeah, he, w- he would go out of his way at the airport or wherever to come yeah. say hi if yeah, he recognized man. me because yeah, he hasn't no, seen me in some years. Yeah, really, really top gent. Really he top almost, gent. he almost made me drop out of school, Joe. To play Yo, tickets. guys, my mom had to sit me wow. down. I was in grade 11. Shukri offered me a job, but it would mean that I would would need to take school leaving certificate and slicer <laughs> and my mom's like you're not seriously considering this right it was to become the, i was going to be the first ever video game analyst at domestic cricket wow. level for the lions he wanted nice. to offer me the job because i went and i worked with a new zealand guy uh-huh. found the technology and then i, I got all those days i came to the really? lions i'm like i have a plug for this gear and this equipment and nice. i know how to use it so okay. he's like cool we'll hire you but you got to drop out of school i'm like ah school Scala for what? <laughs> Scala for who, man? I, I'm on a DVD, the cricket players, all day long. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully they get through today's match. Because if they do, uh, this will be the first team since the 2014 team uh, to get to the semi-final. So the 2014 team is that team that won the World Cup with Aidan Markram. Well, well, no, I would have been the guy. all of those guys. But the thing would is, have been the guy. you know, my mom said she would respect my decision. And then she proceeded to go to her room and phone Shukri personally and say, hey, if he doesn't give <laughs> That job to an old timer now. 
I'm dead. She's like, I don't even want you to tell him he can't have the job. Hire someone else to do it. so that he sees. <laughs> My mom was like, I'll hurt her. It will end in tears. Uh, Mamzu, think about it. I'm on a, the biggest radio station in the country right now doing a breakfast show. You denied me, Joe. I could have been a DVD guy for a team. That doesn't even make the semi-finals. True. No, but it ended well. Um, it ended well. Mom, it ended I in co- your favor. I could favor. have been a half-baked cricket coach at Ellis Riss Primary today. <laughs> oh, my mom Come did on. me slag, Joe. We do traffic. Jamming in traffic with Y. All right, let's wrap with traffic. GP Old Joburg Road out in Centurion. Your traffic lights are out at the Rainter Road, but your points were not there to assist you in one southbound. Note roadworks causing traffic restrictions towards the Willy Fontaine Road exit. Uh, major delays can be expected over there. So, where to highway? Your traffic lights are out at Eben Kalia Drive, perhaps you're out in uh, Woodmead. R55, your traffic lights still out at Maxwell. Out on uh, the N1 northbound, once again, remember that crash. Uh, that happened before the Malibongwe Drive exit, still causing delays out there. Jansmats Avenue, uh, there's been another incident over there near Lower Park Drive, also causing delays. Four-way Cedar Road and Uranium, those traffic lights are out. Jansmats and Burnside Avenue, your traffic lights are out over there as well. Wrap it up with this night in Santon. If you're on Greyston Drive this morning, your traffic lights not working at the M1 Highway, but pointsmen are there to assist you. Back tomorrow morning with your next update for your traffic. I'm Candice. Are you intrigued by the media industry or do you think you have what it takes to be the next media mogul? The Media Focus Forum Roundtable with Why Mornings is focused on discussing all aspects of the media industry. Tune in for a day in the life of a media professional, career options, the media landscape and where to get your start. Hear from industry greats, Boston Media House graduates, lecturers and get insights on how to crack it in the industry. That's the Media Focus Forum Roundtable with Boston Media House on Why Mornings every Wednesday between 8 and 9 a.m. Visit Boston mediahouse.ac.za and register today. Connect. Create. Express. Milk the moment. Milk the cash cow with Steri Stumpy this summer. Tell us your favorite Steri Stumpy flavor with the hashtag Milk the Cash Cow and tag YFM on the socials. You can play live every Thursday on the Lady on Drive for a chance to win cool Steri Stumpy hampers plus 1,500 rand every week until the 18th of Feb. Plus stand to win your share of 250,000 rand when you buy a Steri Stumpy and follow the details on PAG. T's and C's apply. Do what you love and you'll never have to work a day in your life. If you're ready to take the media industry by storm, Boston Media House and YFM want to give you the opportunity of a lifetime. How does a scholarship worth 180,000 rand towards a full three-year media studies diploma sound? Or how about a Soul Candy Digital Composition and Production Scholarship worth 30,000 rand? Just get to yfm.co.za, submit your results and your clip of a radio link or music mix. May the best applicant win. Boston Media House. Connect. Create. Express. Experience the best. Moving on your top five tonight. Feeling young, but they treat me like an OG. Front, I'm kicking my feet up while I write this in somewhat tropical. Supposed to be relaxing, this passion makes that impossible. Why experience it? And dry. Welcome to Chincham again, the one and only Papi Mabele, founding editor of tech and motoring website twofold.com and contributing editor to Top Gear magazine SA. He's in the building looking fresh and clean. And of course, we're about to chat about the Land Rover Discovery, the most versatile seven seater SUV. Look, this is a three liter V6 engine. It's a diesel, turbocharged, good for about 221 kilowatts. Oh. And then transmission is an eight speed auto, and then you get zero to 100 in about six. 8 seconds Whew. for a big car this is quite impressive absolutely I must say it weighs about 3.5 tons actually That's so heavy. yeah it's, it's very very heavy Bobby can we talk about the looks of the car yeah. and what is new on it is there a big difference because uh, the only difference I noticed was a grill mesh yes front. that's the only difference I saw <laughs> <laughs> that's one of a few look mm. it's very very small uh, differences um, last year actually they changed the whole look of the vehicle not the whole look rather sorry it's a facelift yes um, it's a facelift so you'll see that the lighting technology is different from the previous one you drive <laughs> 1.7 million rand cars like it ain't a thing i've wow. done more but okay what's the, the most expensive vehicle you've ever driven it's a rolls royce my friend how much is that one going for I does not have a price they refuse <laughs> to give me a price because uh, it belonged to the dealership and we drove it down to durban july sure. and it was amazing um but it's a lot of money i hear Hi, my <laughs> what's the price prices prices going up 
Monday to Friday, 3 to 6 p.m. Only on Y. Just saying, Kutu, I drove that same car that he drove, um, and I can give you a price. I don't know why they didn't give him a price, but they gave me one. It's on my Instagram page. I did a full review of that car. It's the Rolls-Royce Black Badge Cullinan. And it's 14 million rand. That exact spec with taxes that one Mum Kiza has. Just in case you need to know, Mum Kiza's Cullinan black badge with the fold out uh, picnic seats at the back and the, the opulous package in the back seat with the champagne uh, fridge. 14 million rand, that vehicle. Wow. F- 14. Wow. Million. For Koloi. Mm. And to think, Mam Kize drives to shop right in that thing. Here's Wave Rider. I'm Coco Sadden. Ooh, Layana. Out of Holland. It's another one that I play every single day And if you're getting sick of it It's not my problem I don't care them. I'll play it again tomorrow as far Can it? Dango Botswana man Let us continue. It's the final hour of the show, which means it's the Boston Media House Media Focus Forum. This week we're talking film and television. And I'd like to welcome onto the show my next guest. We've already heard from Gerard, but joining us on the line now is Gideon LaRue, a television lecturer at Boston Media House and actor as well on various productions. Gideon, good morning. Good morning, Gideon. Good morning, good morning. What a show. I love it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's how you. we do it. Energy, energy, elevate, elevate. Now, let's talk about your field of expertise. Maybe you could start, Gideon, by sharing uh, some of the highlights from your career while working in, in the television and film industry. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, so I studied acting and, uh, yeah, it was off to a very slow start and uh, I, expa- I, I decided I, I need to, to uh, expand and see what else I can do in the industry. And so uh, you get an audition here and there, you get a role, it's awesome, worked on some great movies, I worked with the French, um, they're very cool, and um, yeah, but you don't always have that acting job, and the money runs out, so you, I tried to, to do other things, I worked in, some, in sales at ETV, where I understood how the money of the industry worked, yeah. and from there on, 
uh, basically started to think about my own ideas and my own things that I want to create because if I'm not going to land the audition, then I'm going to create the, the show and put myself in front of the camera. Clever. And so with that, with that I've uh, worked at the Sefters, I've worked, uh, I've traveled the whole country uh, on, on shows like uh, Tires and Briars in the past that we worked on. It's just, uh, it's, it's the highlights are meeting great people, building a great network. Uh, the, the industry is full of love as much as you have to have a tough skin. And, um, yeah, and you get to travel. Someone once, a cameraman once told me this thing, and he was pointing at the camera, will take you places. And he didn't mean success. He literally meant it's going to take you around the world, and that's awesome. I love that. Now, listen, Gideon, tell us what were some of the biggest lessons you've learned working in the film and television industry? Sure, definitely. There's so many you can learn. Um, from my side, I think the biggest stuff uh, that, that I can point out is uh, at some point in, in my early days of my career, in the first few two to three years, I realized that self-study is important and that you can't really think you've got the degree or the diploma and you can carry on with that. You constantly have to uh, uh, evolve and, and, and gain knowledge. And so if you constantly keep a, a beat, a tab on the industry and know what's happening everywhere and uh, furthering yourself study by looking at, say, YouTube tutorials or uh, doing another little certificate here and there, just upping your skills. I always say the more knowledge you have is, is great because you have a lot of ideas. And the more ideas you have, there's a likelihood one of the, those ideas are going to bump into each other and create a brand new thing that no one's seen before. Love that. Now, it's very hard to find a job. We know this in the film and television industry. What advice do you have for job seekers in television and film? Maybe you'd like to share some things that you wish you um, or you wish they would know as they get into the market. Sure. Um, yeah, I think people don't always uh, realize how much effort it actually takes to get a job. So what I tell my students is, um, especially the, when they, they're about to head off into the world, um, I tell them, just realize that finding a job is an eight-hour-a-day job in itself. Um, there's a lot of, you know, uh, uh, websites you can go to that have job offers and stuff like that, so you can always browse those every day as there are new jobs and constantly look for what's out there. But also, if you're going to work in our industry, I suggest identify what production companies are in your area or in your province or who do you like and who do you want to work for and uh, push to to uh, to go there email them and say hey i'd like to have a, a job here or an internship or something like that and if you have to hound them because it shows dedication and passion uh, when I got my first acting agent, they really ignored all my communication for three months until I walked in there unannounced and I said, look, I really think you're the place for me and I'd like to showcase myself to you and and that worked out. So it's really, yeah, just a, it's a lot of effort and you have to keep on keeping on trying to get that job. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there's also so much, so much new internships available. Most production companies of uh, big ones like, say, Urban Brew Studios have great internships. Netflix has just poured a lot of money into uh, education here for, it, for, for uh, your studies and, and so on, bursaries. Um, so there's always uh, that as well to, 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 to look at and, and find the... Uh, uh, work and internships and like stuff like that. But yeah, just know, you know, I get like my daily. I still look for jobs. I'm a freelancer as well. I lecture. I do productions, and I act. And basically, yeah, I still have about fifty emails coming in every day, notifying me of different jobs. Some irrelevant to me, but uh, yeah, like sometimes I get like nail technician, and I'm like, well, if I'm ever in a drought, I, I'll consider that. Listen, that's Thank some you solid so advice. Much, we'll chat to you okay. again soon. Have a great day. Thanks for joining us, Gideon. Cool. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Cheers. Look, we're running out of time. It's been crazy today, but we do have one more chat for you. When we come back, uh, we're going to be chatting to um, Lingane Dube, who has a diploma in media practices and is specializing in television. We'll chat up next. 
Get ahead with multiple specializations when registering for a media degree or diploma from Boston Media House. Visit bostonmediahouse.ac.za today. Do you aspire to a highly specialized career in the production and technical fields of the media industry? Bring your ambitions to life with a diploma in radio and television production from Boston Media House Santon. From second year, choose to specialize in either radio or television. Apply now to qualify for our 27% invest in SA subsidy. bostonmediahouse.ac.za YFM has made a promise to comply with its license conditions. If you think it doesn't, submit your complaints to the programs manager within seven days. You can post your complaints to YFM at number 4 Albury Road, Dunkeld Crescent, Dunkeld West, Extension 8, Santon 2196. The programs manager will respond in writing within three days of receiving your complaint. If you are still dissatisfied, send your complaint to the BCCSA at block number 8, Burnside Island Office Park, 410 Jansmatz Avenue, P.O. Box 412365 Craig Hall, or call 011-326-3130 or fax 011-326-3198. You can also email the BCCSA at napsa.co.za. Do what you love and you'll never have to work a day in your life. If you're ready to take the media industry by storm, Boston Media House and YFM want to give you the opportunity of a lifetime. How does a scholarship worth 180,000 rand towards a full three-year media studies diploma sound? Or how about a soul candy digital composition and production scholarship worth 30,000 rand? Just get to ifm.co.za, submit your results and your clip of a radio link or music mix. May the best applicant win. Boston Media House. Connect. Create. Express. All right, as we get ready to wrap up our Boston Media House Media Focus Forum Round Talks, uh, we do have one more chat. We've been chatting film and television, which is your favorite thing, oh, right, yes, Candace? Absolutely, I'm enjoying this one. It's been so your dreams. Much. How come, like, did you ever consider studying it? Was it something that you were like, never? Mm. Never. I remember telling my friend in Matric, I'm like, dude, I'm going to study drama. And she's like, nope, don't do it. You're not going to get paid. Remember? And Which is a misconception. Just the salary, you, you can know? get paid. So yeah, I know. It's completely off. I wish I actually did. Anyway. It's K Cause I lives in Waterfall. Man. Anyway, okay. To wrap it up for us, we're now going to hear from a graduate. Okay, joining us on the line, I've got Mlingane Dube, uh, who has a diploma in media practices and specializes in television. Mlingane, good morning. Good morning. Hi, how's it? Yeah, very yeah, well, very well. Uh, now, look, we, we don't have much time. The show is about to end, but we'll jump straight into it. Um, Lingani, why did you choose the television and film industry for your career? Um, it's just something I've always loved. And maybe like Candace, something that I just naturally gravitated to and wanted to see myself working in that space. And then maybe you can share with us, take me through your journey. So since you arrived at Boston as a student to where you are right now, what's your journey in the industry been like? Okay, so firstly, I went into it thinking um, I'm going to learn how to make movies and, and TV shows and just come out and try to work in a production company. Um, that um, has kind of happened, but also so much more. I've learned how the, the whole beast works, how everything works in terms of the TV space. And the TV space, TV and film is, in this day and age is so much bigger than just TV and film. I mean, every single person can become a media professional in this day and age. You could start a YouTube channel and blow up from that. Sure. But having these skills that you learn at Boston Media, like operating a camera, having good lighting, good audio, uh, writing a script, telling a story, those are the valuable things that I walked away with. All right, Mlingani. Last one. What words of advice do you have for future TV and film grads and students alike? Um, I would advise a lot of people really, I think, have a narrow view of what you can achieve uh, with studying uh, TV, television and film. And I'd like to say to them that just to broaden up your view because you could offer your skills um, if once you have like knowledge of how the camera works and how to tell a story, you could offer those skills to corporate companies who are trying to tell stories on their social media ah, and website every yes. day. You see, so it's you don't you aren't limited to looking for a job, but you can create your own opportunities. You see what a certain company is trying to put across, 
and offer them and say, I see what you're trying to do here, and we can add a video to that. We can add a weekly video to that. We can add a video series or photos or whatever. And that's what I've done with myself. I've literally offered my skills in the corporate space as a marketing tool, and that same skill can get you into TV too. Fantastic. Thank you so much for hanging out with us this morning, Ligani. Sure, thank you so much. Perfect. All right, now, to get more the information you need, just head to their website. we got to say thank you to Gerard, Gideon, and Lingani for joining us today, sharing some insights into TV and the film industry. Uh, This brings us to the end of the forum. Tune in next week when we put a spotlight on a special edition of the Roundtable Discussion with the Soul Candy program under the spotlight, which is available at Boston Media House. If you're interested in any of these career opportunities, visit bostonmediahouse.ac.com. ZA today and find out about their media degrees or their diplomas.